Welcome to English Listening and Vocabulary. Section 4. You will hear a sociology lecture about the perspectives of time. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today, I would like to share something with you about time. Particularly, I'll be looking at the way we think about time and how these perspectives of time structure our life. Social psychologists have pointed out that there are six ways of thinking about time, which they regard as personal time zones. The first two types of time zones are based in the past. Past positive thinkers usually spend a major part of their time looking back to the past, which means they're in a state of nostalgia, where they fancy remembering moments of happiness, such as birthdays, marriages, and important times of success in their lives. They are those who have the habit of keeping family records, books, and photo albums. The kinds of people living in a past negative time zone are also absorbed by earlier times, but they concentrate on all the negative sides of a life picture, such as regrets, failures, or poor decisions. They spend plenty of time imagining what life could have been. Then, it is those who live in the present. Present hedonists live their life in pleasure and immediate sensation. Their life motto should be having a good time and avoiding painful experiences. Present fatalists live in the present as well. However, they think this moment is the product of circumstances entirely beyond their control, that it is more a fate. Whether it's poverty, religion, or society itself, something prohibits fatalists from thinking that they do perform a role in changing their life outcomes. Life is simply what it is. How about the future time zone? People who are sorted into the future active group are those who make plans and go for their plans. They don't play, but work and resist temptation. They make decisions in terms of potential consequences rather than experience itself. The other type of future-oriented perspective is future fatalistic. This group of people holds a belief that there will be a certainty of life after death and a certain kind of judgment day when they will be assessed on, on how virtuously they have led their life and what achievements they have made in their lives. Okay, so much for all the types. You now may ask, in what ways are our lives influenced by these time zones? Well, let's start at the beginning. When we were born, no exceptions, everyone was a present hedonist. All the initial needs and demands, like being warm, secure, fed and watered, were all from that time. But formal education changes the way we think. Each one of us is taught not to focus only on the moment and start to make estimates about the future. But you might be surprised, every nine seconds a child drops out of school in the US. Most interestingly, there's much more boys dropping out than girls doing so. We may easily draw the conclusion, boys aren't as intelligent as girls. But the evidence doesn't support this. A recent survey indicates that when American boys reach the age of 21, they have spent roughly 10,000 hours on video games, and also suggests that they'll never fit in the traditional classroom because there is a stronger need for those boys to have a certain circumstance in which they are capable of managing their own learning environment. Now, let's move on to how we do prevention education. All kinds of prevention education are usually targeted at the future time zone. We say, don't smoke or you'll get cancer, get good grades or you won't get a good job. But as for present-oriented kids, it doesn't make sense. Though they do know the potentially detrimental consequences of their actions, they insist on how they behave because they're not living for the future. They are in the present right now. Logics won't be helping. And it's no use reminding them of potential fallout from their decisions or previous judgment errors. We have to get in their minds just as they're about to make a choice. How we value and use our time is greatly influenced by the time perspectives we have. 
When Americans come across a question about how busy they are, most of the interviewees usually report being busier than ever before. They admit to sacrificing their relationships, personal time, and good sleep during nights for their careers. But 20 years ago, 60% of Americans had sit-down dinners with their families. Yet now, the number has dropped to 20%. However, when they're asked what if there were eight days in a week, they say, "Oh, that'll be fabulous." They would spend that time working to achieve more. They're persistently trying to get to the future point of happiness. So, it's of vital importance that we know how other people think about time. We tend to think, "Oh, that person is really irresponsible," or "That guy is power hungry." But often, what we care about is not the fundamental personality differences, but only various approaches of thinking about time, rather than distinctions of characteristics. Seeing these conflicts as differences in time perspectives can promote more effective cooperation between people and get the most out of each person's individual strengths. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Support us by clicking on the like button and leaving your comments here. Thank you.